Lakaya Um Litam Yena That's my she good of Aina Maha. Nama on Vishnu Badai, Vishnu Prince Tai Bhutale, Shrimak Tibak Tibiram Tiswami Tidane. Namaste, sir, what did they say? Gorbani Pichari never says a soon Yavari past yet your day is a tari day. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasavi Gaur Bhaktavinda Pancha Kalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Japatitaram Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaha Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Today I uh, thought we explore uh, a little bit about the science of bhakti in its different stages, <laughs> um, as explained by Srila Rupa Goswami in uh, and it's written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He gives a a listing of the different levels of bhakti. <laughs> or the different stages that when one comes in, they begin at stage one and stage nine, which is the final stage is perfection. The different stages have different characteristics and different activities. And each stage as it matures in its, uh, in its stage leads one to automatically to the next stage. <laughs> So reciting the verse by Srila Bhupa Goswami, Adhastrata, Sarusanga, Bhajana, Kriya, and Artha Nivritti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and Prema. Um, when one begins the process of spiritual practice, one develops a little faith in that, in that science. In other words, let me explore what this devotional life is. <laughs> so they develop a little faith that there's, this is something interesting, this is something beneficial. And that faith is initial and it leads one to the next stage automatically. Of course, to develop the first stage, it takes probably lifetimes to get to, but it matures automatically by one's um, interest in taking that step. In other words, we've been looking for solutions to the problems of life ever since we existed. As a living entity, we struggled with the different levels of existence. And there's basic three, basically three levels, the levels of the demigods, the levels of the humans, and the levels of those below humans. These are the three categories, which are characteristics. They each have their own characteristics. Those below humans are always Character characterized by a life of fear. Those who are humans, they're characteristic by a life of lamentation. And those who are demigods, they're characteristic by a life of jubilation. <laughs> These are the three levels of material existence. Now, as we transgress and um, transmigrate from one species to another. It's the soul goes from one level of existence to another until it finally reaches the human form of life. When it reaches the human form of life after millions and millions of births and lower species of life, it acquires higher intelligence automatically simply by the body it has. That higher intelligence is a discriminating factor between what is beneficial 
and what is to be avoided. And therefore, when it's applied to one's life, it means how to decide where success in life will be found. After trying various types of material programs for happiness in different human species of life, we come actually to the point of intelligence where we understand that beyond this uh, realm of material existence, there is another existence which is called the spiritual. Then one starts to think, well, maybe this is where I can find success. This is where I can find happiness. So that faith that has brought that person to that level of understanding takes many, many, many millions of births. But finally, when we get there, it seems like it's something we're just moving in that direction towards, but it's something that has matured over many millions of lives. So then coming in the association of people who are spiritually inclined or who are practicing spirituality, and that is called Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha means, Sangha means a group of people who are sadhus who have a particular goal for coming together as a group. And that is to nourish each other in the process of spiritual practice. And that in that sadhu sangha, the activities of devotional service go on, such as hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, worshiping, around various types of programs. When one comes to that uh, position of being in sadhu sangha, one gets a feel for the activities and develops an attraction for that, along with an attraction for the association of sadhus. And that one starts to uh, taste some of the happiness that is there in bhakti on a very, what we say, simplified level. One starts to feel happy in the association of devotees they start to become interested in hearing about and speaking about and studying about, reading about spiritual topics. Now, that level depends on the person, some people longer, some people less. When that becomes matured, when people develop a uh, full attraction for the activity, the next question comes into their mind, I want to make this my life. So then as soon as they do that, and as soon as that question comes in their mind, then they think, oh, well, how do I do that? And then it's revealed to them that there is a process where one can formulize their spiritual activities in a regulated way under the guidance of a teacher. And then that formalization, it calls, it calls, we call it taking shelter of the bona fide, the spiritual master, who appears in the life of the participant once the participant has developed a sufficient attraction for the process of bhakti. And then working under the guidance of the spiritual master, then what starts to develop is one starts to rid themselves of those things or those qualities, activities that are contrary to one's progress in spiritual life. And so the next stage is connected with the previous, with the present stage, and that is called bhajana, uh, bhajana kriya. Bhajana Kriya means taking shelter of Krishna's bona fide representative. And Bhajana Kriya works in such a way that one automatically starts to serve, hear, chant, and worship. And what is happening? One is becoming free from material desires, material tendencies, material activities, anything related to the material world, 
those things are starting to thin out and starting to reduce. And then specifically within that category, and that is the category is called anartha nirvritti. Anartha, artha means auspicious or wanted, something that is desirable. And anartha means undesirable, inauspicious, not something that one should avoid. So in the process of bhakti, then we learn what are those characteristics and activities that impede our progress in devotional service. And then it gets more into a scientific delineation of the categories along with the subcategories and one starts to see what I need to work on. And in that anartha nivritti stage, there are four categories of anarthas. And these are called uh, anarthas based on philosophical misconceptions, not knowing the philosophical understanding of the process of bhakti, specifically sadhana bhakti and prema bhakti, not knowing uh, one's identity, not knowing that I am actually not this body, a spirit soul, not knowing to the position of Krishna. And the last one is unaware of the difference between real spiritual knowledge and that which goes on as spiritual knowledge, but is it is outside of the understanding of what is bona fide spiritual knowledge. In other words, another category of spiritual knowledge that is not in the category of bhakti. More like mayavadism, impersonalism, or materialism in the name of spiritualism. So then that is one category of four subcategories. The second one is uh, an artist based on pious activities. Hmm. So many times it's explained that one comes to bhakti because of pious activities. And because of that uh, maturity of piety onto a certain level, they get attraction for spirituality. So what are the, what are those what is those four categories? Desire for material happiness, desire to attain the higher realms of the heavenly planets, the realms of the dem demigods, the desire to achieve mystic power, which many yogis have developed, and the desire for liberation. These are the four apparently good, but not transcendental anarthas. They appear to be good because this is what people who are in the mode of goodness aspire for good material happiness, not based on sinful activity, but good material happiness, based on friendship, fellowship, uh, family values, all of the goodies that go on in the name of material life that are not sinful. That's one of the anarthas. Two is the desire to go to the heavenly realms and enjoy like the demigods enjoy for an extended period of time, way beyond the life of a human being. Uh, the desire for mystic power to you be able to control material energy and the desire for freeing oneself from the repetition of birth and death or liberation, which the Ganis are attuned to. These are the four categories in the categories of pious activities known as anarthas. Now we have anarthas that are impious, 
these are activities that are in the category of sinful, which are characterized by the lower modes of passion and ignorance. And they are uh, envy, well, one category, um, duplicity and fault finding, two, three, Patishta, the desire for material fame. And four, the desire for sense gratification within the category of sinful activities, such as illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, gambling, like that. So these four make up the characteristic or the category, I should say, of impious anarthas. And the last category is anarthas that are that come by way of offenses. And these are offenses to the, the form of Krishna, that means the deity, offenses to the holy name, offenses to Vaishnavas, and offenses to people in general, the common people. These four make up the category of anartha in offenses. Now, altogether, these four categories make up 16 anarthas, which are formidable, and one has to diligently remove these offenses, these anarthas, from one's activities and for one's desire to fulfill these things. So these are the four. Now, when one has reached the stage of 75% of those, the artists, the artists are completely removed, three quarters. Then one can move to the next stage, which is nishta. Nishta means fixed. That means one is fixed in devotional service. They are regularly offering their bhakti to Krishna through the activities of devotional service. They are not deviated by anything. When one is not on that stage or on a lesser stage, the anarthas will deviate one from the, the, the flow of devotional service. One cannot stay steady in execution of the vision Krishna consciousness as long as they still have more than 20, uh, 25% of the anarthas uh, still present. So these are the, and of course, then there's the next stage is Ruchi, then from Ruchi comes a Shakti, from a Shakti comes Bhava, and Bhava has six stages, and from Bhava we go into Prema, Prema has eight stages. And then all the way up to Mahabhava, which is the highest form of prema, and that is exclusive for such persons as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srimati Radharani, uh, Dova Mangala Thakur, uh, Madhavendra Puri, persons who are really, really high on the platform of bhava. So we'll stop here. My, my uh, emphasis was to give those 16 anarthas. And each of the anarthas are removed in a gradual way from five different levels of eradication, from one to many to uh, one to many to, uh, I can't remember the categories, but the last two categories is almost, almost gone, and the last one is absolutely gone. Well, the, 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 the fourth category is gone, and the last category is absolutely gone. Well, there's, there's five stages of removal of the anarchist. Okay, so we'll open it up to questions. Just a little bit of an overview of the science of bhakti to get an understanding, because each devotee should very carefully see where am I in the bhakti process? 
And that way you know how to execute your bhakti on that level that you're at. And you, at the same time, you can aspire for the next level like that. And there are characteristics which indicate where one is on the level of practice. And each of the categories have these uh, indications. These are symptoms. There's also realizations. And there's also services that are connected with the different levels. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for wonderful class on like science and stages of bhakti. Uh, honestly, I was knowing this Anartha Nibrati, but never knew like all the 16. So thank you very much uh, to give that in such details. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, any comment, uh, please do unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. I remember yesterday, uh, Sudha Mataji, you were having one follow-up questions which could not be answered. So maybe you can start from you, Mataji, if it's okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Um, I think I have to go back and listen this class again and again and um, uh, just uh, introspect, like, you know, where actually I fall, um, in which category. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, Maharaj, yesterday's question, like, uh, actually, this uh, question is like, uh, um, it's related to deity worship class, Maharaj, which you have given. So uh, I came across this, uh, like in uh, Adi Leela, if it's okay, I can just read it over. Volume 1, uh, Spiritual Masters, that chapter. So I have a question relating to this. Um, is my voice audible, Maharaj? Is it okay? Yeah, I, I can hear you very nicely. Oh, okay, thank you, Maharaj. So this is like uh, three deities, um, Madana Mohana Govinda and Gopi Chena Vallabha. So in the, beautifully, the description was like, um, uh, like when the perfection of life is simply to surrender to Supreme. So in the beginning of our spiritual life, we must therefore worship Madana Mohana so that he may attract us and nullify our attachment for material sense gratification. And this relationship with Mother Mohana is necessary for a neophyte devotee. And when one wishes to render service to the Lord with a strong attachment, one worships Govinda on the platform of transcendental service. Govinda is a reservoir of all pleasures. And when by the grace of Krishna and the devotee, one reaches perfection in devotional service, he can appreciate Krishna as a Gopi Jana Vallabha, the pleasure deity of the dancers of Raja. I think today's class also probably like, uh, it also made me think over uh, this uh, again. So as uh, I have an altar Maharaj, uh, like uh, I don't have deities, but uh, I have an altar. We have like a Radha Krishna picture and uh, Nasimha Dev and Pralat Maharaj, small deity and uh, Panchatattva picture um, and also Srila Prabhupada Guru Parampara. So as a neophyte, like, do you recommend, like, do you suggest I mean, to keep uh, this picture of uh, like uh, and uh, just uh, worship uh, so that it helps me to improve? That's, that's automatic. Oh. Um, yeah, and so Madan Mohan is uh, Sambandha Gyan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Govindaji is Abhideya Gyan and Gopinath is Prayojana Gyan and so the Shastras are divided into these three categories, Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojana Sand of Sambandha means relationship, establishing a relationship so within that category there are many subcategories of how to establish a relationship but not only with Krishna but with all the aspects of society, including one's guru, one the material energy, different types of devotees. And so that's all under the teachings of Sanatan Goswami, who is the representative of Madan Mohan. And so we worship Sanatan Goswami in that mood 
who, who worships Madame Mohan in order to establish some Bandha Gyan. Now that's automatic as we practice the process of devotional service, but you can offer prayers to Madame Mohan. Jayate Sudatompangor Mamma Manda Matirgati Matsarvasya Hambojo Radha Madana Mohano. That prayer is a prayer to Madan Mohan. Yeah, it's a prayer that is recited as part of the Mangala Charana. Mm -hmm. You can find that in Mangala Charana is what we what we recite in our temples regularly during certain festivals. It's a series of prayers. It also has the prayers for Govinda and Gopinath, or as you say, Gopi Janavalava, Gopinath, Gopi Janavalava is the same deity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can recite that prayer. Mm -hmm. Jayatam Sudatam Pangor, Mama Manda Matirgati, Matsarvasya Ahambojo, Radha Madana Mohano. Okay. Um. There it is. Divya Rinda Ranya Kalpa Druma Dan Sri Madratnagar Simhasana Sto Sri Sri Radha Shila Govinda Devo Pristali B. Savya Manas Marami. That's the Abhide and that is Govindaji. Prayojana is Sri Madrasara Saram V. Vamsi Vata Tata Stitaha Karsan Venas Swanayar Gopir Gopinata Sri A. Stunaha. Now that is the Prayojana deity, which is the complete praxis. So we worship these three deities who are representing the three levels of Bhakti, Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayoja. But we also worship through their representatives. So for, for, for Madan Mohan, Sanatana Goswami, for uh, Go, uh, Govinda is Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. And for uh, Gopinath, it's Raghunath Das Goswami. Mm -hmm. So you can find these prayers in uh, Mangala Charanam, which is easily available in any of our song books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I can go to the Iskon Desire Tree. Uh, can I find it over there, Maharaj? Oh, yeah. Okay. Easy. Yeah. Okay. Hey, mostly any of the Outlets, this kind of outlets, we'll have the Mangala Charana prayers. So it's called Mangala Charana prayers, Mara. So entire prayers are there. Mangala Charana. Oh, okay. Okay, Mara. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, please unmute yourself. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, maybe while other devotee asked that question, I have one question, uh, Guru Maharaj, on today class. Uh, out of these 16 anartha, which you mentioned, uh, I feel like four, like that one category, which is impious one, is the most difficult. Uh, I personally feel like for, like uh, desire for sense gratification, desire for material fame, uh, duplicity, fault finding and envy. So somewhere like these, Get qualities remains like quality or like bad qualities remains somewhere. So I think maybe gradually with the devotional service with chanting, when chanting goes better with more devotee association, it will be getting better, Guru Maharaj. Is that the like hope? Yeah. Or? Uh, by the process itself, you're gradually purifying your consciousness, and the effects of these things are reducing. But one should at the same time, be very conscious of these different anarthas 
and be conscious of when they arise, either in the environment or in one's own consciousness. So therefore one can uh, identify them and avoid them. Mm -hmm. But I find most devotees, they struggle with, well, of course, most devotees struggle with different ones, but people who come from India who are pious families, they just, they struggle with this um, anarthas and pious activities, especially the desire to go to heavenly planets. Because demigod, demigod worship means that particular desire to worship the demigods. So people have a tradition in that culture to worship different devas for different types, with different types of pujas. And Krishna talks about that in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita for four verses. But devotees in general, generally struggle with the last category, the, the offenses. Because these are the ones that are the hardest to remove is the offenses, the hardest to avoid. We, don't, we sometimes we commit offenses, we're not even aware of it. So, yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I remember like in one uh, class it was mentioned that uh, we should be careful and that uh, about the demigod worship in one way, like uh, one Prabhuji was passing comment in a, uh, like uh, on a lighter note, he was saying that uh, if you worship demigods, it's fine. It was full of like uh, Guru Maharaj, all the Indian community, uh, mostly like uh, who are coming from India very recently. And he was saying, yes, like you worship demigod, but be careful, like if you worship, you will go to their planet, maybe if you are pious, but then you will be coming back in the midst of Kali Yuga, like the Ghor Kali Yuga, because then it will be too, too bad. So be careful, really make yourself serious. So uh, you don't- Yeah, Prabhupada said the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, going to heavenly planets means, means gaining some financial merit but finances when they run out mean you're back down to where you were before then so and we use different examples that going to the heavenly planet is shinya punya martyala loka vibartam that after some time one falls down again when pious activities are exhausted pious activities are like like money as you spend the money it becomes less as you get the credit for your pious activities then then in the during a certain time period it will run out and then all one automatically falls down to the lower level so yeah generally people come back to the material world or the on this level and again have to take up uh struggling with the three modes of material nature So, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Abramana Bhuvana Laka Purna Virte Arjuna, Mamupetu Purna Janma, Purna Janma Navidyate, from the highest planet to the lowest in this material world, they're all places of birth and death. But one who attains to my abode does not come to my, come back to this miserable material world. Guru Maharaj, can I ask one thing, please? Uh, you mentioned in the last category, uh, fourth anartha. Uh, the last one uh, was uh, offenses for people in general. So what exactly this means? Because this can be anything. You can, you can offend the non-devotees also. There's different ways to offend non-devotees. You can, you can blaspheme them. You can criticize them. You can... You can act wrongly. There's different ways to offend a non-devotee also. 
Every living entity is a pure spirit soul. Every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. Although they're covered and they're under the influence of the material energy, still, it doesn't mean that we should, you know, treat them, uh, you know, in a lesser way. We generally avoid their association. And when we deal with them, we deal very uh, respectfully, carrying on our material business, and that's all, generally. But we can also offend the non-devotees becomes possible. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Really helpful. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. We speak about the non-devotees as being under the influence of the material energy and they're less intelligent. But the fence comes when we actually direct ourselves in, towards a particular individual in an offensive way. True, Guru Maharaj, true. I think uh, also like heard in one class that was, uh, one, like Maharaj was saying that we should not really try to differentiate as you were rightly saying, even sometimes between devotee and non-devotee because we may feel today from our material eyes, somebody is butcher today, but that person comes in the association of a pure devotee tomorrow and he can be transformed completely into a pure devotee at some point of time. While we may think that we are on the path of devotion, but because of certain reasons, our, we fall down something. So you never know who is actually going to progress and who is going to fall down. So better yeah. to not differentiate and treat. No, we, we differentiate, but we keep this mood of respect. Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives the, gives the understanding. He said, I somehow I live in this world because I give respects to everyone. So we respect the non-devotees accordingly, but we do make differentiation. That's important. This is a devotee, this is a non-devotee, but that differentiation doesn't uh, allow for, uh, to minimize or to criticize unnecessarily. Just like, you have to, if you're dealing with children or if you're dealing with adults, you deal with them differently. You deal with the non-devotees differently. You have to make that differentiation because if you don't, then you, you could also be acting in such a way that um, it's just inappropriate because they're not practicing devotional service. Mm -hmm. And you may also find yourself being influenced by wrong activity. So uh, to differentiate is important, but to not to lose respect, that's the, that's the understanding, the bottom line. Thank we you. We respect on the level of the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, uh, you're correct, Guru Maharaj. Sorry correct, for that correction. Yeah, because we have to avoid association of non devotees in the any way. Yeah. Yeah. Asat Sangha Tayaga e Vaishnava Achar. The first business of a devotee is to accept the association of devotees and to reject the association of non devotees. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. There doesn't Me seem too. to be any questions today, so we can stop here. Unless Sri Devi is ready to keep us alive here. Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you for this wonderful lecture with uh, so detailed explanations. As I was listening, I was thinking how, how fortunate we are to come to this process of bhakti yoga step by step, step by step, we can make progress. And I was curious, uh, is this process available to other 
uh, religious paths such as Christianity and Judaism and Islam, do, do they have all these processes of anartha nivritti and so on to reach love of God? Mm, it's not as detailed. Bhakti, the bhakti is a science that goes into the, the, the intricacies of the aspect of the consciousness along with the process. The, uh, the other traditions have these same stages, but they don't really uh, speak about them in the same way. They just they talk about, well, here's a new, new church goer. Here's a regular parishioner. Um, they don't give a real clear delineation between the different levels. They mostly talk in terms of time how long a person has been practicing like that. Thank you, Maharaj. Now, there are some churches that are more progressive mm -hmm. than others, which do have more of a clear-cut categories of practice practitioners. Yeah, I'm just wondering because there are some big mega churches like this person called Joel Osteen. He has 55,000 people streaming into his church every Sunday and they have so many different programs and they seem to be so successful. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, we Hare Krishnas, we, we want to be like that. So I'm just... We, yeah, we have this Richard Warren. He's got millions of followers. Oh. He's out in California. And he's developed a whole system of breaking down people in different levels of practice. He has it in basically five levels. And that's basically on their level of practice. Our, 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 level, of, our level of delineation is based not only on the level of practice, but on consciousness also. It's the consciousness that situates you on a certain level of practice. They talk about it in terms of more or less the different levels of practice. They don't talk about consciousness so much. But yeah, there are, mm, they're much more organized than we are, <laughs> generally speaking. I mean, where did we get this whole Bhakti Riksha program from? That was from the Christians. Jai Padaka Maharaj studied the whole thing for years from the Christians put it all together and presented it to ISKCON in 1995. Mm. Yeah. And they're, they're, more, or they're much more organized than we are. We have the philosophy and they have the organization. <laughs> Well, they've been around for thousands of years, not thousands, but at least a thousand or more. Hopefully, maybe when we get, we'll be able to learn how to get, become more organized. <laughs> We're working on it. Thank you so much for this wonderful lecture. So much to learn and so much to overcome. As we are looking at all these different stages, we, we do have a long way to go. So very important to assess and, and work on our anartha. So thank you so much for the reminder. Yeah. Okay, uh, Vrindavan Nath, I think we should conclude. Yes, Guru Maharaj, there is no uh, question also on the chat, so we can close. I think yeah, there is, sure. uh, in one hour time, close to one hour time, there is a question by Prananda Swami. Okay, uh, just a reminder for those who are interested, and I'm encouraging everyone to, I sent that um, advertisement about the podcast coming up. The interview with Viladananda Maharaj, it comes at six o'clock UK time. Um, on there, there is a 
a website, www something, I can't remember what it says, but uh, I'm not sure how to get on it, but I think if you follow that website and just punch in the website, you'll go be able to go from step to step like that. Yeah, www.latemorning.show. Does anybody know the procedure? Once you, once you uh, put that in, what happens? You go automatically to the podcast? Is it automatic? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. I think Guru Maharaj, this site, when I enter, it has a link to various channels like Facebook or YouTube. So probably once this podcast start, we can just click on those links and it will directly take. Because it will be so directly I live. Think, I, think it, I think it's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So like... But do you have to be a... Do you have to, be a, do you have to sign into Facebook? No, it's not giving anything. It's just directly taking. Oh, okay. So once you hit the link, then it'll take you to Facebook and then you hit Facebook and it takes you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So it's, I'll so call it's you like this. It's like this. Late morning dot show. And if I click on Facebook, it directly takes. And uh, like when this link will be live, I'm sure this will be on the top here. So we can just yeah. click. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. That's the uh, the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Guru Maharaj. Krishna. Thank you very much for this nice class, nice association, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. jai. Gurudev ki jai. Anant Koti Vaishnav Vrind ki jai. Thank yeah. you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, so Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, Dheeraj inspired all of us to get up early and come 15 minutes before your class and made us all chant together. When it comes to chanting, all I have to do is talk to you and they're immediately, they're chanting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Guru Maharaj. It is Dheeraj Prabhu who got us going today. Honestly, he's the one saying, come on, let's do this. And I said, yes, let's do this. So all glories to Dheeraj Prabhu. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Good. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Sanvat Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Namrat. Namrat Pramaraj. Hare Hare. Hare Hare.